Hello everyone, this is Dave Strong from the Schmidt Music Saxophone Shop, and today we've got a really special treat. We have saxophonist Grace Kelly with us here today. Super exciting. She's uh, coming through town and she agreed to spend a few minutes with us talking about gear. Uh, so welcome. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us. Thanks, Dave. Really yeah. happy to be here. Absolutely. I got to hear you play last night. It was fantastic. It was really cool to hear. And uh, as I was, you know, I'm, a, I'm definitely a gearhead even before I worked in the shop here. And I was trying from a really far distance to see exactly what you're playing. Uh, you know, mouthpiece, reed, ligature, horn. Uh, but would you mind taking a couple minutes and talking about your, your setup? Doing the tour of the Please, setup. Please, yes. Absolutely. So um, for the longest time, I was playing on Selmer. Mm. I have a beautiful Selmer Mark VI mm. at home. I played it for over 10 years. One of my mentors and legendary alto saxophonist, Phil Woods, um, when we had met, he was playing the Custom Zs, the yeah, Yamaha Custom right, Z. Yeah. And he was like, Grace, you should give these you should give these a go. And he said that, you know, it, it took, he, he was getting this incredible sound mm. as he did, but for him, he was able to use, you know, slightly less air mm. and he had issues with emphysema and I all these things. That, yeah. And he said, these horns have saved me and allow me mm. to keep playing. Um, and my dear friend Jeff Coffin, mm. he was playing these, and I remember finally trying out the Z's and being like, "Oh my gosh, it's mm. these are fantastic horns." Yeah. The Altissimo is like just comes out beautifully. They're very consistent, which mm. when it comes to looking for a horn to tour with, mm. consistency is also an important thing. I love Selmer horns, but I've noticed that they sometimes can be prima donnas mm. and um, very precious, you know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just feel like when I tried this specific horn, which is um, a Custom Z bronze lacquer, I think there were only like 200 of these saxophones mm. made. It was a limited edition run. Mm -hmm. And I remember trying all the different altos um, with different lacquers and... I played this one and I was like, oh, I like that one. Because mm. I do try to go for a darker, like mm. jazzy sound, but I do play, you know, pop type yeah. funk stuff. So I want to be able to also have like a bite yeah. on the top end. Um, and to me, this horn is very versatile mm. in that way. Yeah, I'm playing the um, Van Doren a eight S plus mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah. Jazz mouthpiece. Been playing it for a long time. I um, have only played like three different mouthpieces in my life. Like even tried only a few, or have you? Have yeah, you tried? believe wow. it or not. That good for you. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I'm one of those people that it's hmm. like I really want to find something that just works, and then I want to just learn how to use that thing. Yeah. Because otherwise, if I try so many different variables. I, I'll get confused and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll always want to keep switching like I do with Reed. I've, I've tried every Reed yeah. under yeah. the sun. But for some reason with mouthpieces, I'm like, you know what? This feels mm. good. I'm getting the sound that uh. I want to, you know, that I'm hearing in my head, mm. which to me is the most important part about gear is yeah. really finding that sound. And I'm playing the um, Van Doren um, M.O. Ligature. Yeah. And... Um, Boston Sack Shop reads. Size oh, you're on the Boston Sack Shop ones. Yeah. Now. Nice, nice. Those are those are great. Yeah, they're great. Very yeah. consistent reads. Again, it's like not often that you might find seventy or eighty percent of reads that play out of the box. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it really I was isn't. Shocked when I tried hmm. my first box. It was like, wow, these all actually all play well. Nice, nice. And so is that the same Z you've had this whole the whole time? Same Z, yeah. That, that's really, and you said about 10 years on that one? Um, I've had this one for, I think so, or maybe even longer. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, it looks like you've played it quite a bit. And it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the, I think that's the one that they, that's the, at the time called the Atelier model, because you got that cool, heavier screw on the neck and... So for a younger player trying to find their first setup, do you have any recommendations? You said you stuck with yours for so long. And one of the things I've noticed is getting it right right away, if you can mm -hmm. do that. I uh, For my alto setup, exactly like you, I've been on the same setup for 20 years. Yeah. But I've had about 50 different al uh, tenor mouthpieces. And wow. so there's that difference between getting, maybe not 50, but <laughs> that difference between getting it right and sticking with it. Do you have any tips on how a young player would do that? Yes. Um, so I started on a Yamaha student model mm. alto. Mm. And I really, I don't say this just because I'm a Yamaha artist. I really recommend 
Yamahas. I mm. just think they're incredibly consistent mm. instruments. And if you're learning an instrument for the first time, you don't want to struggle with the instrument because there's so many things you need to focus on, which is learning mm. how to play it. So I played on a Yamaha 4C mouthpiece, the one that mm. came with the alto yeah, for yeah. two years. Nice, nice. Um, and I was on a size two Reed. I can't remember. Mm. I think it was a Rika Reed at the time. Sure. And that was literally my setup, and I would recommend that to any beginner. Um, I think that those, you know, there's no need to really start searching for complex mm. gear mm. until you know how to play the instrument. A lot of people yeah, obsess absolutely. over, if I just change the gear, I'm going to sound like this, when it's yeah. like, no, nah, you, you got to practice, put yeah. time <laughs> yeah. in, nothing is going to, no yeah. gear is going to change yeah. the hours you put in practicing. But at the same time, I'll also say, if you're fighting against mm. your mouthpiece and your read, yeah. um, that doesn't allow you to to be able to play effortlessly. So that's what I would recommend for any beginners. Yeah, and if you were saying what the first thing or if you can only upgrade one thing, what should they be looking at? Oh, if you can only upgrade one thing. Like if they're looking at horn, mouthpiece, ligature, fancy different lacquer colors. Yeah, you know? <laughs> if you're serious about it, I would say the horn. Sure. Um, yeah. When I changed... I think I started with that Yamaha um, student horn, played it for like two years, mm. and then started horn sh horn shopping. Mm. And I might have even just kept the mouthpiece. Um, mm. But it really is like driving a new car when you have, you know, a, yeah. a new horn and yeah. something that's just feels so different under your fingers. Mm. Um, and every horn is going to react differently with pairings of different mouthpieces and reeds. So you definitely don't want to change it all at the same time. Absolutely. That's yeah, going to yeah. feel like I don't, you don't even know where home base is. Yep. But I would say if you're serious, yeah. I mean, Start with the horn. The horn. Right. Nice, nice. Um, a couple more things. Uh, I noticed you, you mentioned that you same mouthpiece and you stick with that and you kind of err towards the darker side or you lean towards the darker side. What I noticed uh, listening to you play last night and hearing recordings of you over the years, you get a lot of different sounds out. And this is less gear, but maybe you could factor in like how that mouthpiece helps you do that and what part is you, what part's the mouthpiece and phrasing. Because I heard you do, you know, the thing to Phil Woods and you had a very Phil Woods kind of zip to the sound. I heard you do, do some really nice, pretty dark stuff. And then, you know, some of the pop stuff, you get that edge. What do you do to develop that versatility? That's a great question. So I really believe that the sound is in your head. You know, if you have gear that works for you, again, gear that you're not fighting against, then there's so many things that you can do um, that really depend on what's happening in your throat, what's happening in your mouth. And in order to get, you know, there's a lot of things that connect between the voice and how we sing and how we talk with woodwind instruments and mm. things like overtones, right? In order to get sometimes a higher overtone, you need to actually just change your throat positioning mm. and you could try to do everything under the sun, but until you actually are able to kind of sing that note and then play it, that's mm. what's going to help it pop off. So when I hear something in my head that's like, I'm going for this brighter sound, like David Sanborn, I, I've got the phrasing in my head and I, I literally hear him, then something happens internally. And I wouldn't know exactly unless we we're looking under a microscope of <laughs> yeah. my throat, but though the vowels, whether mm. it's, you know, whether I'm doing like a, a ah, uh, which is going to produce like a darker tone or closing my, um, it, you know, the top of my palate and, and making it kind of a more narrow sound, that'll mm. change all of it. But the first place that people need to start, the big picture thing is who, what is the sound that you're going for? You yeah. know, if you have no reference yeah. and you yeah. just go by like, well, my teacher told me to play like this, or yeah. I think it's that it's really hard to capture the sound that you want. And with the same, um, you know, the same mouthpiece, uh, I grew up listening to Stan Getz play and yeah. almost by a, a fault just started to play subtone on my low notes. And that mm. just shows how powerful it is to have the sound Absolutely. up there. Because yeah. I didn't even know really how to play the saxophone. But because I knew early on, I was like, I like that sound. Then somehow, like, I figured out how to do it, you know? Mm. So whether you're... <laughs> There is phys physically things that are happening, right? I'm like saying a syllable like 
Ah, uh, opening up my throat. It's very dark. Oh. I could play that same note, and if I am not doing those things and I'm keeping kind of my throat more closed, it could, it's going to sound a lot brighter. <laughs> got different air streams going on but I'll, I'll give um everybody a little idea of a, a little sound exercise that i have which mm. is if you say the word ah mm. and you just say it without changing anything in your mouth or your throat it it would sound like ah ah mm. do you want to try your go of it there we go Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> they now didn't match it up, but <laughs> I have a like a yawning technique where mm. we're gonna mm. pretend. Oh, we're we're gonna do a yawn and we're mm. gonna stop halfway into our yawn, mm. and you'll notice yeah. there's oh. so much opening. Even yeah. you can hear it in the th like when I talk, the, and <laughs> yeah. the roof of my mouth is raised, the throat's more open. So now I'm gonna say ah uh, with that yawn. Ah, mm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you sing a lot too. So do those kind of go hand in hand? They do. I, they do. Yeah, and as I was huh. like learning vocal technique, mm. I was realizing how much it was, um, you know, making the, the mm. dots connect for saxophone. Yeah, yeah. So if I do just that, what which mm. we just did on a note, ah, uh, ah, uh, You can even hear, Absolutely. you know, yeah. the timbre shift there. So I'm thinking about all those things yeah. when I go into different sounds. Actually, at this point, I'm not thinking about it because I hmm. spent so much time kind of in the, in the lab right? internalizing yeah. Yeah. it. Absolutely. And that's the point that, you know, you want to hmm. get to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Absolutely. So one more question if you have time. Uh, yeah. Just because I hear you have so many different sounds, who are some of your biggest influencers, especially on the alto, but on any horn? Yeah, great question. So, um... Johnny Hodges. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I fell in love with Johnny Hodges. Yeah. His sound is like <laughs> butter to me. It's gorgeous. One yeah. of my favorite jazz standards mm. is the song Isfahan. Yeah. And it's a deep cut. It's a Billy Strayhorn song, yeah. and he plays it with the Duke Ellington Orchestra so slow, mm. you know. <laughs> I just love how he'll Beautiful spoof, tune, you know. yeah. Sometimes even yeah. down two half steps. Yeah. Um, I learned so much when I was, every time I try to try to transcribe Johnny Hodges because it's yeah. like, how did he make the sound? So man? much nuance and flexibility. Exactly. And, oh, yeah. Just yeah. so smooth. Yeah. Um, Paul Desmond captured yeah. my heart early Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Stan Getz, mm. um, Lee Konitz. Oh, yeah. I noticed you, you have sometimes a Lee Konitz kind of sound. I didn't want to say that until I heard you actually listen to them yeah, <laughs> but well, one of the ballads you did last night had a real Lee Konitz kind oh, of vibe to your sound I was like oh, man. oh I never I hadn't heard you sound that way before that's so the greatest compliment because oh, um, Lee was a mentor of mine a teacher we mm. spent a lot of time together we made a record together and to me he's mm. one of the most pure improvisers yeah, yeah and you listen to his work from the days with Lenny Tristano and Warren mm. Marsh and it's like yeah. oh my gosh what is this this is so fascinating and then you mm. listen to later in his life and mm. where he took things where yeah. I really feel his he might have been playing less notes but mm. the way he played it and the placements and the spontaneity yeah. so much nuance and yeah incredible absolutely. incredible nice, nice um who else is is on the I mean my world changed when I discovered Charlie Parker and yeah. literally worked through the whole Omni book with my <laughs> yeah. teacher yeah um I'm thinking of other Cannonball Adderley yeah, again. Absolutely. David Sanborn, mm. Macy yeah. Parker. Yeah. You know, I think it's really important for players to not only um, learn one genre, mm. but really stretch out. You yeah. know, even if it's a type of music that you think you won't like or a type of player you won't like, yeah. you might even learn a new technical thing. I noticed that mm. some cats that are playing like pop saxophone. Mm. Um, I was just listening to a bunch of Eric Marienthal oh, who's yeah. playing with them. Um, Gordon Goodwin's chart. Yep. Killing it. Yeah. Eric's absolutely. one of those cats that can play any style of music. It yeah, I first heard him insane. on some smooth stuff, and then I went to a clinic of his years ago, and he just destroyed. And it's like, oh, he's very, yeah. very good. And then he's <laughs> playing with, you know, Chick with Chick Corea, and it's yeah. just like you 
you can't box him in. No, and, and, yeah. But each one of those ways that he plays and what my ear is listening towards is like, what are the nuances mm. that he's doing in that yeah. genre to make mm. it, you know, really shine in that poppy solo or to make it really just super killing it in this jazz setting. And I yeah. think studying mm. the whole range of different players and different styles yeah. of music, Earl Bostick is also just mm. a freak of nature and i know mm. he was one of charlie parker's idols and it's like yeah. well, he was do- i i don't know how he does <laughs> that stuff in, yeah but i've been listening I, to uh, enough of him but yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. it's so swinging too man and the yeah. altissimo is just like out of mm. this world yeah. yeah so many great people um mm. Gosh, it could just go like on and on. And yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's cool. That is great. And uh, we're probably about out of time, but really, thank you so much for joining. That that was super fun, and I'm looking forward to catching you playing again later today. But uh, mm, thanks for joining too. us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. Uh, again, this is Dave from the Schmidt Music Saxophone Shop. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Awesome.